Hey guys, what is up? Hope you're doing well. Hopefully you've had a great half term and enjoying all this sun and this, this lovely weather. Um, welcome to the June Youth Evening Service. Um, today we've got a message of hope, we've got uh, a Bible reading, we've got an activity, we've got two worship songs coming up, so stay tuned, it's going to be good. Um, yeah, hope you guys are well, and without further ado, enjoy the June Youth evening service. Good morning Henry. 4pm, yep that's a uh, it's good enough time to wake up. <sighs> Crazy thing is this isn't this isn't even the latest I've got up. Oh oh hey Charlotte. Hello. How are you doing? Good thank you and you? Yeah I'm good. You enjoying the sun? Yes yeah, nice. It's warm. <laughs> nice, that's what we like to see. So, um, I've got some good and bad news. Um, which one would you like first? Um, we'll go with the bad news. Okay, well, the bad news is, um, coronavirus, we still don't know when that's going to be over. Um, and I'm even hearing talks of uh, there being a second wave if people aren't careful. But um, it's like a mountain that we've got to get over. But um, hey, there's there's some good in it as well. There's some good in it as well. Um, and this isn't even the good news. I'll tell you the good the good news later. But the good thing in this is that we believe in a God who can move mountains, and we believe um, that our God has the power to do that. So not only um, this mountain that we see uh, can it be moved by God, but it's not even a bump to God. That is how amazing and big our God is, and. Um, only God can move the mountains and only God can heal our land and we've got to hope and believe and pray that he will do that because he will do that so we've got to have that hope for the future
thank you to the Holdens who, who filmed that song for us. Thank you. Um, so, um, as you may have guessed, this service so far has been about hope and hope for the future. Not only that it is brighter than what it is now, but it's brighter than what we have ever seen before. That tomorrow is a better day than today or the day before. And we can see this in the Bible as well. It's not just us who wants our day tomorrow to be better than today or yesterday. The disciples wanted it to. You see, um, when Jesus went to the grave, they waited a few days and Jesus froze. And they're like, yes, Jesus is back. He's back. And then for 40 days, he was around again. And then he ascended uh, in, an, in an event called the Ascension crazy name I know um, so he ascended up to heaven in the ascension and um, he says that he will be back that he will return and the disciples thought this was going to be a short amount of time they're thinking oh yeah like that one time three days um, he'll be back in a few days he'll be fine and then a few days passed he wasn't back and they probably thought a few weeks a few weeks passed and he wasn't back. I'm thinking, okay, well, it's got to be a few months. But he'll be back. A few months passed and a few years passed. And the disciples realised that maybe their timing isn't quite like God's timing or Jesus' timing. Maybe that what they're hoping for isn't going to happen right away. That it's going to happen at some point, but sometime in the future. Maybe that they've got to not only prepare for the return, but prepare people who will take over them um, in, in teaching Jesus' teachings, in, in behaving like him and doing what he did. They've got to teach people to do that because he won't even return in their lifetime, maybe. And as we know, Jesus didn't return then. And we're still waiting for him to return. He'll come back and we've got that hope for a brighter day when one day he will return. And some Christians um, in the early church, they started writing letters to other churches in other cities. One of these uh, being Romans, probably a book that you might have heard of. That was a letter to the Romans, surprisingly crazy. Um, but this guy who wrote it, he was sending a letter to that church, teaching them how can they prepare themselves? How can they be a better church? And, you know, better worship God, better do um, things like Jesus. And um, this was planning not for Jesus to return immediately, but planning far ahead in the future. Like how are we preparing people? How can we make the best out of the situation that we're in right now? And how can we use that to benefit people in the future? Anyway, um, Nick is going to bring us a reading and I'm going to share the rest of the message after the reading and tell you guys about how this applies to us in our modern day and what hope do we have for the future all right see you on the flip side bye today's reading is taken from romans chapter 8 verses 18 to 25 and is entitled present suffering and future glory i consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope, that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have been first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. 
Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Amen. So, I hear you saying, but Henry, how does this have anything to do with me? Well, like in Romans, we are going through present suffering. This isn't a good time and a lot of people are suffering. But it will be brighter one day. There will be future glory ahead of us. And we know that because we have seen brighter days before and we know that there will be brighter days again after this dark period is over. But we've got to have hope. And we've got to get through this period. Um, and, and Paul, towards the end of it, says um, uh, we have hope for what we do not have. Why do we have hope for something we do not have? It's because we're looking forward. We're looking towards something. And that's what we've got to do. As Christians, we've got to do our best bit to, to move forward and get past this um, and build something from where we are to help us move forward quicker. You see, what, what, the, what the early Christians did back then, they built a church, the church. They built them in different cities. Christians were everywhere, but they were very, very uh, smart. They were, they were just sort of here and there. In cities so you've got romans you've got um in 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 the town of corinth and, and that's what these books are these books are letters to the church in that city and 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 paul who is writing a lot of these books um may think that actually um jesus isn't coming back right away but he will come back um he's thinking i'm going to do something now i'm going to build up the church now so that while he's not coming back in maybe my lifetime, he's going to come back because I trust what he says. And if I if I trust what he says, then I need to prepare what the um, people of the future will say, will do, will act like. Um, and I'm going to do that through building up a church and supporting them and helping them by sending these letters on how they should act and how they should behave. So my question to you guys is, Paul improved the life um, he was living for other people back then. How can you improve your life now with the hope that you have for a brighter day? What can you do to make your tomorrow brighter? We're stuck inside, but there's, there's ways that we can improve our lives. We can improve ourselves. We can improve things for other people and make things easier for other people. Let me know, what are your ideas? Okay, coming up, we've got an activity for you guys, and then we've got a worship song, Cornerstone, because we believe that Jesus should be the cornerstone in all of it, in all of it, in our hope, in our, in our lives, in just everything, we believe Jesus should be the cornerstone. Okay, so, hope you guys enjoy the activity, have fun. Hi guys. For the past three years, we've been encouraging you to dream big dreams, but to plan in pencil. So, uh, because as leaders, we want to lead by example, I thought we could have a quiz where we share some of our dreams as young people. Maybe some of them have come true and others haven't. But here's the quiz. Uh, there are going to be some photos and you have to guess the name of the leader and which dream is true. And the person who emails me with the right names of the people and the most accurate dreams uh, will be the winner. My email address, paul.holden at kpc.org.uk. And I hope you enjoy the quiz. So email me the names and the correct dream for each person. God bless you. Thank you.
guys, so we have come to the end of our service. And I want to end this service just by praying. Um, praying for you guys and praying for our situation and praying for hope. Um, so feel free to engage in this prayer how you want. Close your eyes or just bow your head or even say it in your hearts as, as we go along. Feel free to engage how you want. But I'm going to pray. Father God, I just thank you for every single one of these viewers, Lord. Just every single person behind this camera, Lord. I just thank you. I thank you that you're in the process of giving them hope and giving them inspiration, giving them ideas for how they can improve their lives, how they can see a brighter day tomorrow, how they can work towards that, how they can't be downtrodden by the present sufferings and the darkness in the world because you are with them, Lord because you are with them. I just ask that other people in our area, in our world, who are going through darkness right now and horrible things and horrible times and horrible persecution, Lord, I pray that they can see hope for a brighter tomorrow. Pray specifically for um, uh, black people in America and, and across the world who are suffering from in institutional racism, that they can see hope for a brighter day tomorrow that their suffering doesn't continue, but they have hope for a brighter day. And Lord, I just ask that you'll move through this world and you'll, you'll start healing it and we'll start overcoming this mountain ahead of us that is the rest of coronavirus. Because you can move mountains, Lord, and only you can heal our land. And finally, I just ask you, be a part of our lives. From the most obvious things to um, the things we barely notice you in, I just ask that you are a part of all of our lives, all the time. Just be the cornerstone, Lord. Amen. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this week's Youth Evening Service. God bless you.